Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, May 8, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Renato today published an interesting post about an exploit that hit one of his Jenkins honeypots. Jenkins is an automation server that's very popular in the DevOps community. It essentially allows you to automate building large software projects. The vulnerability being exploited here is in the Stapler web framework. Jenkins is written in Java and so is Stapler. Not really a deserialization vulnerability in this case, but instead the issue with Jenkins is that Jenkins is able to execute commands on the system in order to compile or run various scripts. Well, uh, there are certain Java objects uh, that were not supposed to be accessible via the web interface, but uh, by using crafted URLs, it was pretty straightforward due to this vulnerability that was discovered in December. In March, a proof of concept exploit was released and this exploit is what Renato found in his honeypot. Now, the end goal in this case was of course to install a crypto coin miner. Couple interesting little tidbits here. First of all, uh, this particular exploit script used a custom UPX unpacker. UPX is very, very old and often used by malware in particular, since it's kind of easy to sort of modify UPX packed files a little bit and then they won't necessarily be recognized as UPX packed files like in this case. Also, the name of the particular exploit script being used here is Kerber rods, uh, similar to the Kerberos protocol. Not sure if they're trying sort of to fit in here with systems binaries. Complex web-based systems like Jenkins should probably never really be exposed to the public internet, uh, but uh, even if you don't, uh, make sure you are keeping them up to date. And I think it was a couple days ago when I talked about lots of the plugins that are coming with Jenkins that really sort of make it work having vulnerabilities. And as I mentioned, just due to the capabilities that Jenkins has, it's very easy for any of these vulnerabilities then to be used to execute code on the system. But well, it's not just the DevOps folks that have to keep their software patched. A Confluence a collaboration package made by Atlassian had a vulnerability in April that also allowed to execute remote code. This has been used, for example, to install ransomware, but Trend Micro reports that they are now seeing that also being used to deploy cryptocurrency miners again. Small little change here to your typical crypto coin miner that in this case, it actually arrives with a rootkit. And today, Cisco patched a critical vulnerability in its Cisco Elastic Services Controller. The component being vulnerable here is the REST API. Now, by default, the REST API is disabled, but to really take advantage of this product, you probably do want to enable it. The Elastic Services Controller is used to manage switches in cloud environments. And with crafted requests, an attacker may be able to issue arbitrary commands without authenticating. So it doesn't look like a default password, but more like some form of bad access control. And Google Chrome will fix a fairly annoying feature in many browsers that is used by sites to prevent users from using the back button to get away from the site. The way this is usually done is by inserting dummy entries into the browser history, for example, by redirecting the user quickly through a couple different pages. What Google Chrome will change now is that history entries will no longer be added on unless the user actually interacted with the particular intermediate page. So these quick redirects where the user actually never really sees or interacts with the page will no longer automatically be added. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.